What up, people? My name is Sheen, and this is the Feeding Model, where we focus on getting better at capturing models that feed your eyes and nourish your soul. I'm talking about food, film, and photography, as well as product film photography. Welcome back to my returning subscribers. One time for my first time viewers. You could have been anywhere in this YouTube world, but you're here with me, you're here with us, and we appreciate you for that. So in my last video, I showed you guys a little behind the scenes of me capturing this Thayer's Witch Hazel um, product shoot, which you can see here. And as promised, I am going to show you how I threw this all together in Photoshop and created the final image. So now before we jump into Photoshop, I just wanna say that there's more than one way to skin a potato. So how I'm gonna do this, you don't necessarily have to do it that way, but I'm sharing it with you so that if you don't know how to get from this image to this image, you know at least one way, which is the way that I'm gonna show you. It's a luxury to have all these different tools on Photoshop to get from point A to point B, and there's so many ways of doing it. At the end of the day, what it really comes down to is once you learn how to manipulate the photos, it's just a matter of how in-depth you wanna go with it and how much, you know, how much time you wanna spend perfecting the image and how much effort you wanna put into making it quote unquote perfect if you wanna be very meticulous or if you just wanna get it done and off your lap. So with that being said, let's go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is label all of my layers. So just so, um, you know, clean it up a little bit so I know what I'm dealing with here. I got all three drips from drip to drip too hard. And, and then I got a bottle and cotton pad, boom. So once you get everything in there and you figure out the photos you're going to pull certain parts from now it's time to decide what i want to pull from what so i know that i'm pulling the drips from these three layers right um the other thing that i also may want to pull from that layer is the stack of cotton pads because as you can see on this one you can see that the cotton stack is leaning just a little bit to me that matters so i'm going to pull the cotton pads from one of these drip images here so i'm going to label this one both drip slash stack and floral now let's get busy so the first thing i want to do is grab the floral arrangement and the stack of cotton pads here and there's a couple ways you can do that you can use the quick selection tool you can use the object selection tool or you can manually trace it and select that through a layer mask so what i'm going to do which is the easiest way to do this um, using the new feature that Photoshop just added was, is the object selection tool. It should be right here with all the other magic tools that Photoshop has to offer. If it's not, you can go and add it manually. Check out the video that I uploaded speaking of the five new features that um, Photoshop added onto the suite. Um, I forgot what it's called. I'll, I'll tag it up here so you can check it out. So once I go up here, make sure it's in rectangle mode. I'm gonna come across this layer like so and just draw a box around what I want Photoshop to analyze and choose. So once I do that, I let go and let it do its thing. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job of choosing the floral, the flowers on the bottom, and the stack of cotton pads. It's always nice to create a layer mask so that you can go back and fine tune and tweak whatever it is that you wanna tweak if it missed something maybe photoshop might have clipped the edge of the flower off or something you could always go and brush that back in there that goes and i'm going to relabel that okay so now that i got the flower stacked i can turn my background on and now you can see i have successfully extracted the flowers and the cotton pads now the next thing i want to do is grab what's going to be the floating cotton pad now I could use object select tool with this, but being that my hand is in there, I'm going to use a quick select tool. Um, it'll allow me to quickly draw around the cotton pad and select that successfully. I'm gonna go up here where the object selection tool is and grab the quick selection tool. When I use the quick selection tool, I usually like my brush to be small so that I can control what's being selected by Photoshop. The bigger the brush, the more aggressive that it is gonna grab um, the colors in the area that you working with so I usually keep it under 10 and right now it's at about a seven roughly draw around the cotton pad I didn't even go fully around and it shows what I wanted it to now you can see it's a little bit shy on the edges but we're gonna clean that up 
I'm gonna come here and add this little shaded area of the cotton pad in as well. For right now, that's good. So once I get that, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna create a layer mask, come right down here, which is going to pretty much extract the cotton pad from the image and voila, I'm gonna come over here and grab my alignment tool from the ruler. Now, if you don't have this ruler on the side and the top of your workspace, all you have to do is come up here and make sure you click view, go down to rulers and do that. Or you can just hit command R if you're using a Mac to enable and disable that. It's nice to have so you can just click the ruler and drag it over. So with that center line there as my reference, now I can take this cotton pad and simply shift that over until it's centered with everything else just like that all right so for the bottle i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to use the quick selection tool i'm going to trace around just the bottle of witch hazel make sure that when you use these tools you're on the working layer so that you're properly selecting what it is that you're trying to select so right now i'm on the bottles layer i'm going to zoom in and simply grab and you can remove like for instance you see how it over compensated where the cap is you can just simply hit you can just simply press and hold alt option key on a mac and or you can come up here and hit the minus sign and start to take away from what it thought you wanted to select we'll tweak this as we go on so this looks good enough for now so same thing i'm going to create a layer mask for the bottle before i introduce the drips into the image i'm going to clean it up a little bit remove any unwanted edges or rough edges so for example when i zoom in you can see that the bottle on the bottom end of the bottle right up here you can see it missed a little bit of that on this corner here it missed a little bit of that and some of the cap is a little off there so i'm going to choose the mask for the bottle and grab my brush tool and change the size of that basically i'm just going to brush that back in using the size of the brush like a stamp almost and for this here i'm going to grab a smaller brush and just pop that back in there Just like so, just like a stamp, I'm just hitting it one time. It's great that these edges are round. I pretty much got a decent looking mask now. All right, so before we go any further and add the drops into this image, I wanna get rid of this blue here that came from the pecs that I was using to hold the bottle. That's where that blue is coming from. I'm gonna do something just to kind of change the color of that. I figured if I can change this to a red color, it will look more like a reflection of the cap or the background versus just this odd blue color that just appeared out of nowhere. So there's a little bit of it here and you can see just above the label, there's a little bit of it there and some kind of in the foam on the bottom of the bottle. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and the way I'm going to do that is simply create a hue saturation layer which is going to allow me to manipulate just the color of this blue part here. So what I basically did was went to colorize and right now you can see everything changing with the adjustments that I'm making. I Just so that I see whatever was blue in the image is now red. What I'm gonna do now is invert the hue saturation layer mask, which is gonna remove the filter and I'm gonna manually brush in the areas that I want to be affected by that layer. So I'm gonna come in here, zoom in, and shrink my brush a little bit and just brush that in. And once I zoom out, it's more of a dark red that appeared to be from the bottle. You won't really know that there was something blue there and that someone changed it to red. Since the background is red, everything kind of just falls together anyway. So now it's time to grab the drips. And the way I did that, I didn't create a mask for the drips. I basically just grabbed the drips with a ellipse selection tool, which is right here on the um, toolbar. Now being that the drip is perfectly round for to some degree, um, you just hold down the shift key and draw your perfect circle. And I basically just hit copy, paste. All right, so right now I have 
everything that I need for the photo. I just have to align everything, tweak it, and basically render it. Now, the one thing that I did do was I blurred the background to get these wrinkles out of the red background and that was real easy to do I just went over here to Gaussian blur kind of gives you more of a flatter backdrop and not necessarily have all those wrinkles and folds and whatnot and that pretty much created a perfect background and that's pretty much it it's just a matter of creating layer mask and removing certain elements and aligning things making it look realistic as possible as it was making sure the image is clean like i said it all comes down to how tedious you want to be and how meticulous you want to be with the final rendering of the image but this was just to give you an idea an example of what it took to create that image going from one to the other i hope you guys found this helpful let me know in the comment section below i feel like i was kind of all over the place if i was i'll try to do a better job next time as far as communicating and and just teaching you guys how to work around this type of setup.